So warm, warm welcome to everyone for today's webinar. Um, just to say that everybody's on listen only mode. Um, so uh, the way that we will interact is through the chat panel, which you will have access to. So please feel free to type away and we're working through today's session. So today is really around uh, coaching outdoors and it's a real pleasure to have um, a dear colleague, um, I'm going to call you a co-adventurer, because I know you like to be a, an adventurer, so uh, you know for the session, so Fee McMillan. Um, so Fee, Fee's a leadership coach, um, an entrepreneur, yeah, and, and an adventurer. And um, Fee also uh, co-delivers on our Advanced Diploma Programme, specifically in our Coaching Outdoors modules. So thank you for, for coming today, Fee, and, and being part of this conversation. Um, I, I will uh, let, thank let you. Fee it's say... Thank you, Great, great. And I'll let Fee say a few more words in a moment, but just really uh, in terms of housekeeping, um, as everybody is in listen only mode, you know, please have a pen and paper handy because, you know, I do always encourage you to capture reflections as we're working through uh, today's conversation. Um, second thing is, um, you know, it's always helpful to, to shut down any applications that you may have open. So your email, other web browsers, because sometimes that affects transmit, transmission speed. Um, we will be recording the session though, so this will appear on our YouTube channel uh, from Friday, so you'll be able to listen to it again. Um, yeah, so I think the, the only other piece really uh, in terms of arriving and getting set is I'm, I'm always conscious of helping everybody be really present for a conversation. So um, yeah, if it's okay, I'm just going to suggest that we just take a moment to pause um, just before we, we invite you into the session in terms of hearing what you would like to get from today's conversation around coaching outdoors. So uh, in terms of just taking a pause, just taking a moment, it's going to encourage you to, to sit upright in the chair that you're sitting in. You can do this with your eyes closed or open. But just take a moment to really notice how you are. So noticing what we're aware of as we pay attention to the internal weather. That may be a thought or a feeling, a physical sensation. We're not getting lost into a story of why we're feeling a specific way. We're just noticing what's here as we arrive for this call. And now become aware of the felt sense of sitting or standing. So just noticing perhaps contact with the floor through the feet, contact with the chair that we're sitting in, that felt sense of the weight of the body going into the chair. This is a way of grounding our awareness and enabling us to be here right now. There might be temperature or pressure. Just at these contact points with the ground and the chair. And now noticing the height of the body coming out of this strong base. And as we're noticing the height of the body, see if we can feel the torso, the arms, the head, the face, rather than just thinking about them, really feeling into the upper body. And as we notice the upper body, just see if we notice any tension as tightness in the body. We often carry stress here. And if that's true for us, we can just allow that part of the body to soften and release as best as we can. The felt sense of just dropping into this posture a bit more. And then just for a final part of this exercise, I'm just going to invite you to 
ask ourselves a question and that question is you know, what do I want from today's webinar which is forming an intention of being part of this conversation for the next 45 minutes or so what do I want from the conversation today about coaching outdoors And just noticing anything that bubbles away in awareness as a result of asking ourselves that question. And then in a short while, we're going to hear the bell sounds. And as the bell sounds, it's an invitation to open the eyes when it feels right for us to do so. So if the eyes aren't open, just allowing the eyes to open. And then I'm just going to invite uh, the, the group just to add any questions onto the uh, chat panel. So you're here to listen to Fee and I having a conversation about coaching outdoors, working in the outside as, as a coach. But what questions are you holding? So please feel free to add those to the chat panel just so we get to see some energy and focus for the conversation. What questions are you holding about working outdoors, coaching outdoors? Okay, so thanks, Mike. I can see the uh, question coming through about how to bring the outdoors into coaching, tips and pointers. Yeah, lovely. But what else would you like to hear? So from Sarah, when do you suggest this to a client as an option? Yeah, great question. Great question. Okay, Robert, curious about any indoor tools you modify and take outside. Yeah, lovely. And for Michael, how to frame for executive clients. Yeah, Ros, uh, some thoughts around logistics, example, lack of note taking, etc. And Isabel, how you choose the right place and how you create safety and the container. Yeah, wonderful questions coming through now. Thank you. Please feel free to continue to add some of those through as a uh, as we start the conversation and we will pick up on on these questions during the course of, of the next 45 minutes or so so fee so um maybe maybe let's just start with a very personal question in terms of your own practice if that's okay so um i've known you for a long time now and i suppose i've sort of seen the sort of um the forming of of this work for you and your practice. Um, so I'd be really interested for you to share, you know, perhaps what's led you to, to be here, what's, what's interested you. Yeah, how have you arrived let's, uh, in terms of this practice? Okay, thank you. So about 10 years ago, I started training as a coach. And at that time, I spent time outside and, you know, just regular domestic stuff, dog walking with the kids. And then as my coach training started, I was also going through quite an intense time in my personal life. And the kind of, inc the kind of things that I was doing to take me outside became a bit more, I, I was sort of leaning into it, if you like. So I started to do more long distance walking. I started to do mountain walking and I, I did some long swimming trips. And what I found as I was starting to move into my coaching practice and becoming more reflective and more aware was that um, as I was doing these other things outdoors, I was feeling really great. I was feeling not just well, but I had a certain kind of mental clarity. And I also felt, I felt kind of, I'm going to say powerful, but I felt like I had a lot of agency in my life at that stage. And so it led me to become quite curious about what was happening when I took myself outdoors. And so as my coaching practice formed, I began, as I, as I was exploring, to think, well, what happens if I work outdoors with clients? Not off the mountain just yet, but, you know, moving into that sphere, what happened? And I saw that it gave clients a lot. So um, that's what brought me to this place here where we're talking about coaching outdoors today. Yeah, great, great fee. And I... I just love that sort of sense of agency, you know, that you, you spoke about in terms of um, yeah, coaching is about mobilization, you know, um, you know, what, what it may bring. And um, 
so let's let's just I suppose clarify something because you said there about um, you know not taking not going up a mountain just yet. But I suppose when people think of coaching outdoors, I imagine people think about you know being on, on a mountainside with a client and metaphorically walking alongside them up the mountain. But when when you you refer to coaching outdoors, like what what specifically are you talking about here? You know. Mm. So I, I want to market that I do hold a dream that we will be spending in, in the next few years, that there will be an opportunity to really coach senior leaders seriously outdoors um, for now, um, by which I mean up a mountain. Um, for now, what, what I mean by that is working with what is. So most of my work is in central London. And so when I'm coaching outdoors, I'm coaching in green spaces, mainly Hampstead Heath, Regent's Park. Um, I've worked on the Thames Path. Uh, even the South Bank, Bank Centre, you can sit outside. There are lots of people around, but you can get some of the benefits there. And last week, you and I were working together in a, basically a graveyard with a lot of green space in Bloomsbury. So I think it can mean any of those things, but I also think it's also, apart from the space you're in, it's also an orientation. So if I was working with a client and it had to be inside for some reason, it was pouring with rain, if we can sit by a window and there's a window where we can look at a tree or the sky, for me, that's in connect. It means really, in for me, it means in connection with the natural world in some way. Um, so even a room with pictures of nature around us would be not quite coaching outdoors but it would give us some of that connection yeah and you sort of shared about your own personal experiences of feeling more powerful let's use, use that phrase but in terms of the benefits you know that you're sort of touching into when you're you know, thinking about whether you are physically outside or you're by a window or there's there's pictures of nature that enable you to to bring in some of those qualities into the the, the, the space. Mm. I mean, mm. what what benefits do you do you experience? Perhaps for you, first of all, Fee, as the coach, and then and then maybe if you've got some examples mm. of your clients, that would be great as well. Mm. Okay. So there are many layers here, and, and this is kind of a big area, if you like. I think there's something, for me, I feel very well outside. I feel steady and at ease. I feel peaceful. I feel kind of sharper, you know. Um, but I also, I, I kind of feel more inspired outside. And I'm, I'm kind of more in touch with myself when I'm outside. And what that means is I can be more present with my coachee. Um, in terms of coachees, I think, you know, to a man or a woman, uh, there isn't a coachee who I work with who doesn't go outside and sort of do something like, oh, great. You know, they're relieved to be outside. So that's just kind of a really, a really basic starting point. And there's a lot um, on social media at the moment around coaching outdoors. And if you like, you can take the same conversation you'd have inside and take it outdoors. And that's, you're still going to get a lot of physical well-being, mental clarity. Um, there's a lot of research around this, um, much of which is in an excellent book called um, Your Brain on Nature, which I'm just going to show you this book here. And, you know, so those physical benefits are there. In terms of actually working with clients, so I think that the real kind of opportunity here with coaching outdoors is to take it much deeper than that. And if we kind of move just very briefly through a couple more of those layers, you've got the opportunity to work very actively with the natural world around you. And this is something we were doing last week in a CPD session that we were doing together, where you're actually inviting a client to work with the space that they're in, the, the choices they make about where they want to go. If you're in a park, do they want to go towards the trees along this particular path? What holds resonance for them in terms of what they're exploring? 
And then there's kind of imagery and metaphor that you can draw in and work with that. Um, and then I think for me, a really exciting kind of level on from there is around systemic connection. And this is really where my kind of inquiry is. If we think of those nested systems, you know, really the natural world is our ultimate system that we live in. And sages of old, maybe religious figures and others used to go out into nature to ask for answers. And I tell that story, if you like, because I think there's something there for us about touching into a deeper wisdom in ourselves. And that, that place is really where my research is around and my real inquiry working with clients is. Thank you, Sue. Thank you. And I think from you know, the work that I do with, with sort of mainly execs who around resilience and you know, just, just getting them in the outdoor space, as you said, and seeing them take a breath and really, you know, get out of their doing, striving, you know, being actually into to more presence. I, I, I metaphorically, there's something very powerful for me in terms of, you know, just watching people really slow down and, and connect with themselves, like you were saying. Um, so, you know, I could just sort of see some some questions around sort of logistics and container and um, I, so I suppose the question I've got for you is you know thinking about making this safe let's let's use that word you know you're what you you meet an executive who um, you know his, his life is usually going from meeting to meeting to meeting in a, in a meeting room and sitting down with somebody just what you've learned around what enables executives to feel safe in going out outdoors it'd be lovely just to hear some mm. experiences what what you do mm. well these questions these brilliant questions that i see in front of me i suppose i'm in inquiry about all of them all the time myself mm. and what i've learned from the work that i've done over the last few years is that um, a few things around safety and um, choice would, would you like i work outside with most of my clients and so I just simply asked my clients at a chemistry session, you know, is that something that would interest them? And then taking it on from there, I will always uh, have a brief conversation with them about working outdoors, what might uh, concern them about that, you know, what, what, what resonates with them about that. Um, and then beyond that, I think before I actually take someone out on a session, Will, I'll have said, you said you wanted to work outdoors. Can I suggest this? Do you have any, you know, does that work for you? And I will suggest the place where we walk because as a coach, I need to know that it's a place where I can coach well. For example, the path is wide enough for two people to walk along it. Mm -hmm. But there are various other things that are there. And then I always email them the day before and just, I will check the weather and I'll just check in with them again, confirming the location and checking to see if they've got any queries and just, you know, circle it right down. Um, and then when we actually set out before the coaching session, do a real check in with them around how they are, how they're feeling, are they well, have they got any injuries, How's the, how are their energy levels, just really paying attention to this different space for them. Mm. Thank you. Thank you, Fee. And, and you know, like just the simplicity of, this becoming part of your contracting, you know, in terms of, you know, I, I work um, outdoors as well as indoors, you know, what would you prefer, you know, and then, you know, just the normalizing of it. Um, so I think mm. for some of us, we think it's going to be a big, big thing when actually, you know, there's so much, like you said, so much research now showing the benefits of being outdoors in terms of creativity of thought, et cetera. You know, I'm sure a lot of execs will have read about this. Um, so, so I'm just um, I've got some other questions have just come through, and I will I will pick up on these as as we're go, we're going into to the conversation. So I'm sort of just wanted to reflect back that sort of sense of you know contracting with them in the chemistry, but then your sort of sense of care around making sure they feel sort of well held. You know the sort of check ins before you meet them. You, you said about making sure that it's a place that's uh, right for you to coach. So it's, for instance, the path's big enough, which I think is a lovely reflection and you can walk alongside them um, and also I suppose it's big enough for other people with bikes to get past as well in London <laughs> um, 
but also that sort of checking in with them leading up to it around the weather, making sure that it's still okay. And then you're contracting with them on the actual day itself around things around how they're arriving, anything you need to be aware of in terms of how they are physically, et cetera. Just anything you would say around anything more about the space feed? Because I know you said about the path. Are there any other things that you really bear in mind? And, it, and again, the only reason I invite this question is because of you know the work we did last week and I was I was aware that you had gone and visited the the, the site for the coaches we were working with etc so so what else would you say to a coach to bear in mind if they're thinking of a potential location well I think first of all in all of these questions you know I've come to these uh, insights through my own practice and so the best way to kind of work this out is to start to have a practice of your own and feel into what's right for you um, in terms of the space i would always check it out first but what i have now is i have a handful of places that i work and i know that they work for me as a coach and with a coachee so you have like a little portfolio of places to visit which may have a cafe there you know where the loo is you know how long it takes to walk around you know what the kind of um environment is you're going to be walking into so for example the place we worked in last week um, was very peaceful in comparison to other parks around and I chose it for that reason so that there was space for the coaches we were working with to really have a good experience um, so those are kind of a couple of bits around the space I find it easier to meet a client at the space rather than walking there with them so proximity to public transport also works for me yeah we have lots of rich questions here yeah no definitely definitely you know, and, and um, I suppose it's, it's yeah, let's, let's, let me just ask you a question. So just based on your, your experience today and also now the work we're doing, supporting other coaches to work outdoors, what, what would you say is the most important thing um, that you've learned so far, Fee? Uh, my sense is that we're all very habituated to be inside so actually to give ourselves permission to do it feels like um, an important part of that really and to through your own practice as a coach maybe starting off just taking your own inquiries outside but maybe also with a peer to just feel into how can this work for me how is this right for me and just develop your own authority around this i think is is a really important part of this where we're very deliberately doing something different you know which has its benefits from a coaching point of view but also we, we have to find a way to manage what is different in that if you like yeah, thank you. Thank you. And I know, um, you know, there's something, again, very uh, uh, strong about, you know, even starting a walk with, with a coachee in a park, you know, and ending the coaching program, we start doing the same walk, you know, I think, that, I think there's something very ritualized around this work as well. Um, so, Sophie, I'm just going to go through some of these questions, if that's okay. Yeah. I have some more things I want to want to ask you, but... Let's just see what, what else we can sort of pull out. So Jasmine is asking the name of the author of the book um, that you, you pointed to. Um, Eva Selhub, Eva Selhub and Alan Logan. Okay. Thank you. Um, and she's also asked, is, is there a different manner to direct the conversation when coaching outdoors? As I noticed a different level of disclosure from the coachee when in that space. Uh, all of these things depend on the coach and the coachee, I think. Um, my experience is that I get a more real version of the coachee right up. There's less kind of, we can slip under the surface of things more readily, I would say. Um, everyone has a different connection with outdoors and some people aren't comfortable with it you know it makes them feel a bit nervous um or you know what, what's happening so you know that's all all to be managed i think yeah yeah thank you thank you and i think the whole um as i'd always say to any coach just really thinking about how we 
you know, hold the conversation at the end of the session just so they can transition well back into the next part of their day. Um, so, you know, um, like with a couple of my clients, we've contracted, we actually meet in a park at the end of the day, um, sort of in the late mid afternoon, and we spend a couple of hours walking around the park at the end of the day so then they can leave from that space and transition into their, their, their home life, you know because uh, that felt right for them. Mm. So I think this is all, all contracting. Um, but yeah, I agree. I think, I think there's something mm. about, um, like you said, I love the, the piece you said around the fact that, you know, often when uh, you're meeting them in, the, in perhaps their normal business setting, there is that sort of persona that's there that actually you're saying, you know, is, has, has actually been removed often when we meet them in a, in a neutral space and, a, and often an open space like, like nature. Um, so Adam's just asked, you know, is there any additional training to coach training needed to deliver outdoors work? I mean, just anything you would reflect around that, V? Just on, because I know you've had many experiences from vision quests to, you know, the, the activities you do, but what, what would you, what would you say? Well, I think, I think it's around personal awareness and personal comfort. What the question provokes in me is, ooh, that's training I'd love to offer. Um, and obviously we're doing some work around that together, Damien, with, with a group of coaches. I, th I think really, Adam, the, the, the thing is to work, work some of it out, have an experiment with yourself around it. So I don't think there's any additional training needed. Um, it might give you some really useful insights and, and uh, that could be useful. But I think really it's about taking yourself out and seeing how do I feel when I'm outside, asking myself questions that I want to answer. And then maybe practicing by going outside with a peer and doing some peer coaching outside. And then you can just wait until you feel comfortable to offer it outside. And uh, yeah, I think that's really the key thing. That, as far as I know, there isn't any specific training apart from the work that we're doing at the moment around coaching outdoors, but I think it's a really interesting question. Mm. Yeah, great. I agree. I agree, Fee. I think some of the best learning can come through peer coaching and seeing what works and you know, what really supports your, your process as, as you're being coached and coaching someone else. And obviously there are courses like forest bathing, which is a big thing that's taking a bit of focus at the moment, but I, I, I wouldn't say that's at all required to, to work where we're likely to be coaching as, uh, with our clients, yeah. Um, so Tony's uh, point, how do you encourage clients to continue using nature or the outdoors to support them between sessions? So this is a sort of a, it's an unfolding process fee <laughs> what, is, what, what have you tried around that? So um, what I do for myself as a coach is I have a practice of going outside and taking my reflections outside. And um, with clients, if, if they've enjoyed the experience, it, I mean, I guess a kind of natural way at the end of a session is to say, you know, they'll say, oh, God, it's been so good to get out. And I might say, well, so tell me, in the rest of your life, what opportunities do you have to do this? And I remember meeting one um, who was a partner in a professional services company and he confided in me that he, he had young kids and he would leave home early in the morning to get the tube down the road, except he didn't. What he'd do is he would then walk to a tube stop about four stops away to get the opportunity to walk and have some headspace in the morning before he kind of went into the system. So um, just having that awareness raising uh, conversation with them of solo t I think this is about solo time outside or um, colleague conversations outside rather than the oh yeah I walked the dog with the family at the weekend which is a really different experience yeah thanks V and I think um, again my own personal experience is you know clients do tend to see the, see the real value in being outdoors so they you know, you're likely to hear them saying things like the fact that they're now taking more conscious breaks, you know, at lunchtime and perhaps going for a walk. Um, I mean, we did a, we did a webinar on journaling um, with, with Jackie Holder. And again, you know, I think, I think, you know, for them going outdoors and doing some journaling can just be, a, you know, a short period of time, but again, it can just have a powerful impact in terms of their ongoing reflection between sessions as well. Um, so, Fee, 
Mm. Mike, Mike's just asked about the fact we touched on metaphors when we were talking about, um, you know, the way that you may be using the space when you're outdoors and he's saying about how you introduce mm. that to mm. the session. Mm. Well, you know, as human beings, we're very attuned to being outside. It's kind of, it's in our DNA to be attuned to be outside. And uh, there's something here about conscious and unconscious awareness. And I think it's often the case that you can say, if someone's talking about something, you can say, well, is there an image or symbol that you see around you that holds any resonance for you at the moment? And then developing that into, uh, you know, tell me more about that. What are the qualities of that thing? And just allowing them to see around them something and something that maybe has a greater meaning for them and i i think this came up last week where the coaches who were working outside were saying that this was a really rich area of inquiry for them so i don't think one has to do anything big and complicated i think simply introducing the idea of what holds resonance for you in in the world that you see around you in this place where we're walking um and people come up with surprising things and it taps into i think it taps into the unconscious mind really easily yeah yeah and i, I just would a way just encourage you to go with the coaches energy you know so um you know there may be metaphorically a bridge perhaps crossing a i don't know a small pond or a river in the park you know as you're talking about a change they're making. So it just may be opportunities for either the coach to, to offer you know, a reflection around as you're walking over the bridge and there may be a question or it may be you know, just encouraging the coachee to notice. Um, you know, as, as Fee was saying, so if, as you look around now, you know, if there's somewhere in this park that seems to represent the current situation, where would you go and stand and be led by the coachee's energy? Um, and I think that sort of goes to your point, Fee, as well, about just making sure that, you know, the, the coach knows the area as well. So, uh, you know, they're, they're fully aware yeah. of the space and the fact how long it does take to walk around the park or, or whatever. Um, so just a quick reflection from Sarah. Sarah's asking, you know, if we use this in supervision, I'd say definitely. Um, and I, and I think it's just a reflection. You know, sometimes it's not, it's not me that's outside, so I might be doing supervision virtually and the, co uh, the supervisee may be outdoors in a park you know, or on the phone and, and working with me. Um, yeah, I, I, I love to do supervision outside. And a colleague of ours, uh, Karen Prentice, she specifically runs a supervision group in the parks around London you know, during the different seasons. So I definitely think this is all about if coaching is about creating a reflective space, you know, it's just gonna it's just gonna dull that up a bit when we're outdoors. So definitely. Um, so Fee, just anything else resonating for you? Just as I'm gonna quickly just check some of the questions just to see uh, what we haven't spoken about so far. So just anything else resonating for you you'd like to share? Well, I suppose what's coming to me as I'm hearing the questions is is to this point about developing a personal inquiry about experiencing you know what it's like for you as a coach if you want to do this to actually be working outside really taking your own inquiries outside and just walking not really putting them in your brain and thrashing them out but walking gently holding a question and seeing what comes to you and with that experience, that experience can inform how you can be present with a client, with their own inquiry, if you like. So, yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Fee. Um, yeah, so I just saw a reflection coming through from Sarah Massey. So just saying about uh, Cambridge University um, is running a one-day CPD event of coaching in nature in July. So I'm sure we'll all be Googling that uh, a bit later. Um, and then from Adam, you've mentioned a variety of wonderful venues from parks to forests to mountaintops for coaching spaces. Are there any insurance considerations for working in some of those places? So what would you like to say in response to that, Fee? So I have uh, 
normal professional indemnity insurance and my insurance brokers tell me that I am insured for working with clients in uh, parks in London and those such spaces. And what we did this week was uh, at Catalyst 1.4, we cross-referenced this with Damien's insurance policy and we found out we got exactly the same answer. And their thing was, so long as you don't take them rock climbing or anything. So at the moment, we feel safe with the work that we do, that we're insured. Obviously, we'd have to advise you to talk to your insurers and check that they feel similarly. Good question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, great. And I think that's where the considerations of weather comes in as well, you know, um, just to keep the coaches safe. Um, so just, just ch time to pause again and just see if there's any other questions coming through from the group so far. Just around working outdoors with, with a coachee. So any other questions coming through? So I'm hoping we've answered the questions that you've raised so far. So just feel free to add those to the chat panel. Damien, while we're waiting for those questions, I suppose I'm just moved to say, you know, what we're talking about here is we're talking a lot of kind of physical considerations, and then there's the kind of practice considerations, if you like. And what we were exploring last week with a group of coaches we were working with was that actually coaching outdoors, although it offers a lot of opportunity, there's also a very different feeling around it. There's a lot of kind of in inverted commas noise, there's things to manage. So it's really having an experience of that and working out, okay, there are real benefits to doing it. How do I leverage them? And how do I just do the kind of physical housekeeping that makes this possible? So there's quite a lot to pay attention to in all of this. Yeah, definitely. And I have, I have a mantra and some people who've worked with me will know it, which is like, you know, there's no coincidences. So actually, you know, again, with all the potential disruptions that will often come in potentially to a coaching session when you're working outdoors, um, you know, how can you use those actually in the conversation as well? Um, so I can see some questions coming in. So this was mentioned as well earlier about note taking uh, mm. while walking. So, um, so again, what, what are your thoughts around that thing? So I, I never take notes while I'm with a client. I always sit down when I've been with a client and write out notes straight after they've left me. Um, in terms of, because I feel like the connection with the client, it has to be more than exactly the words. Um, in terms of the client taking notes, because they're having insights, I'm just sensitive to that and we can build that into the contracting Quite often, if we're working outdoors, we might stop. We might stop at a cafe and have a cup of tea or sit on the bench. Um, and or they might be walking along and might say, oh, do you know what? I just want to take some notes here. And I'll say, fine, and we'll sit down. So uh, not rocket science, but you, know, it, you just need to build in how you two want to do it together. In terms of other props, um, I've just got some sitting mats, which are walking sitting mats. So if we wanted to sit on the ground, we can just be comfortable and not get wet bottoms if we're sitting under a tree or something. Um, but I didn't, I, to start off with, I, I took nothing apart from my rucksack with some money in it and uh, a phone. That's it. Yeah. Uh, impact, are, are there any empir empirical studies evaluating the different benefits of indoor or outdoor coaching? Robert, not that I know of. Um, and uh, that is something that I would like to initiate, contribute to. I think that's really fascinating. And the question about what have you noticed about your own practice changing by using this? I suppose I feel like I, I work with almost all my clients outside now if the weather is good. And I think I have um, uh, a deeper connection with my clients. And I think they are freer in the work they do. I think there's an implicit invitation to do things differently and to um be free of all of those things that we feel like we're supposed to be and should be doing uh, to be freer on it in our expression and the agency we have to make changes so that's what i would say for me thanks v thanks v i mean there's, i think there's some studies around um walking uh but not necessarily coaching outdoors so i, I agree with v um I think, I think for me, one of the, the real values that I think walking with people brought me was just more, um, I suppose, tuning into the coaching in different ways. So, uh, 
you know, listening more to my body as I was walking alongside someone, noticing when their pace slowed down or sped up, um, you know, and just being curious about what, what that was telling me as well as the words I was hearing. I think in terms of the richness it can sort of bring, um, that, that was the real impact for me in my practice, I think. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Any Any final questions coming through from anybody just around uh around this this session i mean there was one question robert asked earlier actually that we didn't touch on which was you know adapting sort of indoor techniques or models for working outside yeah. so i don't, I don't know if there's any thoughts she had on that one please yeah i think that's the frontier of, of adventure question really i mean i think we can i haven't i won't have thought of everything you know and uh if I imagine some of the techniques I might use inside around using space or doing a constellation or, you know, I think it's all translatable. It's how you do the translation and, and uh, what an interesting experiment that is. So mm. I can't think of anything that I wouldn't take outdoors. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I agree. I agree. I, th I think the only other thing I was going to reflect in terms of equipment or prop you know, it's Kochi having their phone with them because I think sometimes they want to take a photo. You know, we might be yeah. looking at a view or um, I, I, who knows, we may have done some some work together and there may be some sort of uh, visual representation they want to take with them at the end of the session. I find them having a phone where they can take photos is really useful. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. Um, yeah, and a brilliant anchor to um, the experience that they've had, yeah. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. It's just something just came in from Isabel. So along with metaphor, are there other ways you bring in creativity? Playing with twigs, stones, question mark. Um, there aren't specifically, but I would be led by whatever is prompting the conversation and what's happening between the client and I. So if twigs and stones were something that was coming up, I wouldn't hesitate to be working with them. Um, and uh, other ways you bring in creativity. I suppose for me, the creativity is in the piece that connects us with the space we're in and what's happening around us in the natural world. That would be the kind of, but how we play with that, I think it's a really interesting experiment and I think that it could be done anyhow really is the thing. I'm also seeing Adam's question uh, before that also asking what's the most wonderful coaching session you have experienced outdoors? Well um, in January when it was freezing cold I met a client who I've been working with for about two years on the Malvern Hills and we walked along the spine of the hills uh, for about five hours. We went somewhere and we came back again. That was like the most beautiful lovely walk I would say the most powerful session I've done outside was actually in Canary Wharf on the Thames Path where I had someone who was very polished um, and we suddenly fell into much better, more natural connection because we got out of the kind of really slick meeting rooms. So there's a couple of examples. Yeah. Thank you. I mean, I, I, um, I and it's interesting because when I think about my best coaching session outdoors, it was in a very small park on a summer's day uh, where I've been working with a coachy indoors and it was really about her finding a purpose and she was really start struggling to connect to her sense of meaning and we went outdoors and um, you know it was just all there in terms of what she connected to and it was just a very simple thing of being outdoors there was nothing else that we changed and it just really opened up in terms of you know that I suppose her real sense of purpose in her, in her life um, yeah. it's a very touching moment um, yeah, and I like your word, I like your, the word of playing, you know, and it feels very playful. And so I think, um, you know, in terms of creativity, I would just really encourage you to go with an, an experiment and see it as a, 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 an experimentation, really. Um, yeah. Sophie, I'm really grateful of you making the time today. We're nearly, we're nearly at time. Um, is there just any, any final thoughts or... Uh, perhaps even just a, a key piece of advice to get started if anyone's listening today and really thinking about just making a move to, 
to to work outdoors with a coachy yes well i suppose my core reflection is really to look at the material that we've just kind of brought up in this 45 minute session how rich an area this is i've i've learned i've learned such a lot from the questions that have been asked there's so much to inquire about around this um in terms of getting started uh i i my thought would be you know grab a mate go out have a conversation outside see what happens mm. thank you thank you and there's just one other question i, I wouldn't want to leave without uh, answering jasmine's question so do you notice a difference in the duration of the session of its outdoors yes so i wouldn't work in a session of less than two hours outdoors i think there can be things to manage so um, that feels spacious enough that we can fall into a stride together, have a great conversation and then say goodbye with ease. I don't know. I don't know about you, Damien, mm. how long you would leave for that. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Especially if, um, well, we experienced this last week, especially if we're meeting in a, in a, their office and then moving to a space as well, you need time to transition in and out. So I think, I think, yeah, less than two hours uh, would be too short really. Yeah. Um, so just in, just before everybody leaves, I really hope there's some real value that you're taking away from from this conversation, and it's given you permission actually uh, to to have a go. You know, um, just 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 wanted to point out that our next webinar is going to be on the third uh, of July, um, and it's at twelve thirty UK time, and it's going to be on the topic of finding your voice. Um, so using a, a new tool called voice print in uh, coaching sessions it's with a colleague of ours Liz Palmer so really hope you can make uh, that session as well um, but really appreciate you dialing in thanks for all the wonderful questions and look forward to seeing you again soon okay great